And on the eighth day, God looked down on his plan paradise and said, I need creation to continue. So God made a gay man. God said, I need somebody willing to look deep into himself and question who he truly is, to challenge convention, to wrestle and ache on his journey of self-discovery, to consider fleetingly cutting it short, only to realize that it really does get better. So God made a gay man. I need someone with a will strong enough to rustle rejection from those who love him, to repel the abuse from those who condemn him, wish him ill, call him fairy and flamer and freak and faggot, and yet someone forgiving enough to open his arms when they finally understand his heart and soul are no different from their own. So God made a gay man. God said, I need someone willing to sit up all night with a plague-stricken friend and watch him waste away and die. Then dry his eyes and say, this sacrifice will not be in vain. I need somebody who can draw hope from loss and be inspired. Inspired, God said, by the ugliness in the world to conceive of a more beautiful one and with a passion to make it so. I need someone generation after generation to reimagine my world, to speak words that make others dream, don disguises to make them laugh, fashion costumes, design spaces, sing songs, paint pictures, and mold monuments that overwhelm the world with beauty and wonder. So God made a gay man. And then God said, I need someone who grasps that not all love is the same, but that all love is equal and who understands that while creating life is special, creating an exquisite world where life can be truly lived is, well, spectacular. So God made a gay man. And God looked upon everything he created, and he was filled with pride. <laughs>